Exodus chapter 33, verse 16, in his uh, priestly prayer, the, the prophet Moses prayed like that. You have brought us out to be separated unto yourselves. Now, what does this really mean? That God took a people for himself. In the beginning, man was created to be with God at his right hand. You know, the very purpose that God created us was to fill the void left by Lucifer. Lucifer had that place, the an exalted place at the right hand of God. Now, this was way before the incarnation of the Son of God. This was way before, eons of times. So, he was at that exalted place. So, when he fell, there was a vacuum. There was a void. Because he was created for praise. He was created to worship. So, when he fell, now there's a vacuum. So there's a void. So God made men. That is why the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 3 verse 38 that Adam was called the son of God. See, that is the original title. The son of God. Seated at the right hand of God. So Adam was made to be in that exalted special place. Not anywhere else. So he was just given some exercises to do by working his way to sit at the right hand of God. You know, anything that is freely given to us, we never appreciate it. Agrees everybody? We never appreciate anything that is freely given. Soon before you know it, we lose it. But when you work for it, when you slot, you sweat, that thing that you earn after that becomes very precious to you. And you will make sure that you don't lose it at any cost. In the same manner, see when Lucifer was created, he was immediately installed. Okay, this is your right place. This is where you sit. This is where you exalt. This is where you praise God. This is where you shine forth. So, he fell. So now, God created man. That's the position where Adam was destined to. But, now he must learn to value that place. So the Lord put him far away, not even in the Garden of Eden. Far away. Eden is a vast place. Let's say, for example, like, California, vast place like California. And the garden is in one corner of Eden. The whole area is not the garden of Eden. The whole big place was called Eden. But in the eastern part, on the farthest end of Eden, was a garden. Now let's imagine like this. Let's suppose... This big stage is Eden. So on the far eastern corner, let's suppose this far end is where the garden was. So we read in the scriptures every day in the cool of the day, from somewhere God walks to the garden to meet with Adam. So there's somewhere from where God comes. There's somewhere. That somewhere is in the center of Eden where the throne of God was. This is so beautifully typified in the making of the tabernacle. At the far end on the eastern gate, outside the eastern gate is the altar of burnt sacrifice. But in the center, or at one far end, is the Ark of the Covenant, where the glory of God resided. 
and the high priest or the priest, he offers the burnt sacrifice in this place. And then from here, he works his way from furniture to furniture. Finally, he comes to meet God before the Ark of the Covenant. So this was the design of God, that Adam will first learn how to do gardening work, the most holy hobby, gardening. So he learns some gardening. He learns how to grow some vegetables. He learns how to grow tunips, potatoes, tomatoes, all those nice, and broccoli, all those wonderful vegetables. <laughs> After he learns how to do all that, but he's not supposed to sell. No marketing. All right. <laughs> This is only for self-consumption. He's not supposed to sell. No merchandising the anointing. Amen. So, he freely receives. He's supposed to freely give to all the animals who come to eat. They are all are vegetarians, you know. <laughs> yes, the lion, the cows, the tigers, every one of them were vegans. Okay? I'm getting spoiled in America, you know. <laughs> so, after that, he works his way, stage by stage, even in growing, growing in the knowledge of God. Eventually, he was to be seated at the right hand of God to reign and rule with God. That was the plan. However, he fell at the same, by the same method how Lucifer fell, obedience. Till today, all of us are tripping and falling in the area of obedience. The area of obedience or the test of obedience has different faces for everyone. But if you look at the crux of it or the spirit of it, it is a test of obedience that we all fall under. From Adam till today, we are falling one way or another, failing the test of obedience. So Adam sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And Genesis chapter 3 verse 24 says, he could no more stay in the garden of Eden. So therefore, God chased him out of Eden. Chased him out to go wherever he wants to go. But, he is God's son. No matter how much your sons and daughters rebel against you, they are still at the end of the day your sons and daughters, right? How can you chase them away? You cannot. You know, I think uh, it was in the year 93 or 95. I spoke at our dear brother Neville Johnson's church. And that Sunday, a mother stood up to share a testimony that uh, it, uh, the following week, I mean the past week before that Sunday, it was her birthday. So the children, four of her children, took her out for lunch. And uh, while they were eating, suddenly for no reason, her son got up, pulled out a revolver from his pocket, and shot the mother at a point blank distance. Just like that, point blank, bam! Miraculously, the bullet missed her. Miraculously. How can the bullet miss you if you're just three feet away, right? Unless you are blind. Am I right? But I believe there was an angel standing there and just pushed the bullet. This happened to me once, you know. Not a bullet, but a stone. Stone being thrown at me. It's okay. So, <laughs> the, the bullet missed and this woman stood up to give her testimony. I'm so glad that God saved me and I'm alive today. So everybody clap their hands. No, no, not you, they. 
not you, they. So they all clapped their hands. So everybody was so happy. So then I stood up to share my message. For some reason, I had to make a point across, so I quoted this woman. So I asked her a question. Since your son shot you point blank, do you hit him? She said, no. I said, how can you not hit him? I asked her. She said, because he's my son. In the same manner, if a human like her can still love her son who wanted to kill her, how much more God? How much more God? Who is all good? How much more? So he wanted to bring men back to himself. 